We've looked at the smallest thing in the universe. We've even looked at the hottest thing in the universe. And I think my head's now recovered from that. So what about the shortest amount of time possible? Well, this is Planck time, and it's very strange indeed. Let's find out more. Planck time is defined as the time taken for light in a vacuum to travel one Planck length. Now, I've already made a video about the Planck length, and you can go and watch. But, spoiler alert, the Planck length is really tiny. That means that the time taken for light to travel across one Planck length is very short indeed. In fact, it's 5.9 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. That's about this much. Okay, so we're going to try and imagine just how mind-meltingly short the Planck time is. But just like we did with the Planck length and Planck temperature, we're going to get there in stages. Right then, let's start with a frame of reference that hopefully we can all understand. So let's start with a second. On screen at the moment, a light is flashing. It stays on for one second and then goes off for a second. Seconds are the beats that time our lives. The average heartbeat takes just less than one second. So let's think about some things that last for one second, avoiding the obvious jokes. Roughly six lightning strikes hit the Earth every second. Also, in one second, the Earth travels about 19 miles around the Sun, or roughly 30 kilometers. So for every second of this video, the Earth is 30 kilometers further in its orbit of the Sun for this year. But if you thought that was fast, light in one second travels 300,000 kilometers. Strictly speaking, it travels 299,792 kilometers in one second. That's just over three quarters of the way to the moon. Okay, so what's next? Well, let's think about one tenth of a second or 0.1 seconds. Don't worry, I'm gonna miss out a lot of these, otherwise this is gonna be a really long video. In one tenth of a second, a world-class sprinter can run about a meter. Sound at sea level will travel about 34 meters and a bumblebee beats its wings about 20 times. The average eye blink lasts for about 0.1 seconds, so this is 0.1 seconds or 10 to the minus 1 seconds. Now 10 times smaller than that, and we find a hundredth of a second. A Formula 1 car travels about 1 meter in a hundredth of a second. Most timed sporting events such as a 100 meter sprint are timed to the nearest 100th of a second. Our eyes work at rates around this speed. Even though our eyes really don't see in frames per second, it's a convenient way of thinking about things. Our eyes are thought to refresh at a rate between 30 and 60 frames per second. And this is all to do with how our eyes detect light. Light coming into the eye interacts with chemicals in the light detecting cells called rods and cones. This causes an impulse to be sent from the rods and cones to the brain. But then after that, there's an enforced rest period. The rods and cone cells can't now send back any more impulses for a short period of time. So to make sure that our vision isn't jerky, our brains retain the previous image until a new image is sent from the eyes to update the image being perceived. This then means that our view of the world is updated roughly between 30 and 60 times per second. A millisecond is one thousandth of a second. In one millisecond, light will travel about 300 kilometers. That's roughly equal to the distance from London to York. One millisecond is 10 to the minus three seconds. And some sporting events are timed to the nearest thousandth of a second. Let's speed things up a little bit and now move on to a microsecond. This is one millionth of a second, and now we're starting to get seriously quick, and the kind of times we can only now start to imagine. The elementary particle, the muon, has a lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. Also, the 2011 earthquake in Japan was so powerful that it altered the rotation of the Earth slightly, and days are now 1.8 microseconds shorter than they were before it. Even at a millionth of a second, we're nowhere near to Planck time, 
so let's press on. A nanosecond, or a billionth of a second, is 10 to the minus 9 of a second. In one nanosecond, light will travel 30 centimetres in a vacuum. Atomic clocks are the way that we keep an accurate measure of time today. Accurately knowing the time is essential for GPS satellites to work properly. The standard that we use is the number of vibrations of an atom of cesium-133. So one second is defined as 9,192,631,770 oscillations of a cesium-133 atom. So one oscillation of one of these atoms would come in roughly here in our journey through the minuscule end of the timescale. Let's go even shorter in time and look at the femtosecond. This is 10 to the minus 15 of a second, or one millionth of one billionth of a second. In this time, light will travel about 0.3 micrometers. That's about the size of a large virus. Chemical reactions happen when bonds break or are made. And this process is very quick, and it takes about 200 femtoseconds. Also, the elementary particle, the tauon, has a lifespan of 290 femtoseconds. At our next stop on this journey through time, albeit short times, we have the attosecond. This is 10 to the minus 18 of a second, or this small. And now we're getting seriously brief. There are as many attoseconds in one second as there are seconds in 31.7 billion years. That's more than twice the current age of the universe. At 10 to the minus 21 of a second, we have the zeptosecond, and this is one billionth of one trillionth of a second. And here we have the shortest time that we've measured. We've measured the amount of time it takes for a photon of light to cross a hydrogen atom, and that, by the way, takes 247 zeptoseconds. And yet, even here, we're nowhere near to Planck time. But before we get on to how unbelievably small this is, let's have a quick think about where this idea comes from and what the implications are. Like all the other Planck units, Planck time is derived from some of the universal constants. And in order to derive Planck time, the Planck constant, the gravitational constant and the speed of light are used. As I've already mentioned, Planck time is the time taken for light to travel the Planck length, which, as we already know, is very small indeed. Our understanding of the universe breaks down at timescales on the Planck level, and this affects our understanding of the start of the universe. The universe is governed by four fundamental forces, the strong nuclear force, which holds atoms together, the weak nuclear force, which governs nuclear disintegrations, among other things, electromagnetism, which affects how charged particles interact, and gravity, which is the attraction between two bodies that have mass. It is thought that at the Planck time after the Big Bang, all these forces were combined as a single force. Following the Big Bang, the universe expands. But before the Planck time after the Big Bang, there is no space and no time. If string theory is correct, then the universe consists of 10-dimensional quantum foam, and our explanations of space-time have no way of describing the behaviour of the universe before the first Planck time after the Big Bang, and this is known as the Planck Epoch. OK, so let's try and imagine just how stupefyingly tiny the Planck time is, and we're going to try and imagine how many Planck times there are in just one second. So let's go, and I'm going to do this in two ways. Firstly, our universe is currently almost 14 billion years old, and I'm going to call that one universe as a measure of time. There are more Planck times in one second than there are seconds in 10 million trillion universes of time. Let's think of it another way. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, contains about 100 billion stars. That's 100,000 million stars. And there are many estimates of how many galaxies there are, but some of the upper estimates suggest about 2 trillion galaxies. 
That's two million million galaxies, each with about a hundred billion stars. So let's imagine every star in the universe has 300 identical planet Earths. On each of these planets orbiting every star in the universe, if you counted every grain of sand on every one of those planets orbiting every one of those stars in every one of the two trillion galaxies, then you'd be in the right kind of ballpark for the number of Planck times in one second. That's how unbelievably tiny the Planck time is. However, before we finish, just do something for me please. Move a part of your body, an arm or a leg or even a finger. That body part moved a certain distance during one Planck time. It had to, otherwise you didn't move at all. And the amount that it moved during one Planck time must have been smaller than the Planck length. So Planck time is something that we live through. We just can't experience it. Anyway, I do think I need to go for a little lie down now. And if you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit subscribe for more geeky videos. And until next time, thank you for watching.